Mr. Wilson 86, you're the sole reason for this video existing. Let's take a look at this. First early gameplay trailer for Unrecord, the body cam FPS wishlist on Steam now. Let's take a look at this trailer. Cause I have heard some things about this game, but I don't think we've seen such a big long trailer. Crazy, 18 million views in like what? This was posted today. This is just insane. Does it have any audio? It does. So this is a body cam FPS. Like, look at this. I mean, let's just freeze this for a bit. Like even, I mean, Twitter, Twitter traditionally had like the worst compression. And, but I think if you have like Twitter blue or something, I mean, he's verified. So he's probably got like Twitter blue or something. Point being, I think Twitter has good quality videos now, which is really the, the real kind of mind blow, I think in this video. But anyway, like, just like, take a look at this. Like, I'm gonna try my best here to also look at this from a technical point of view, but like, this is a game. Like, I'm just, I'm immediately blown away. Speaking of being blown away, look at the sky being blown out here. Like, you see how we can barely see like this thing? Like this kind of power pole or whatever it is? Like you can barely see those pixels. Like let's really zoom in here. Like look at that. The fact that it's kind of like, it's just completely blown out. Because remember, this is supposed to be a body cam FPS. So a body cam, like a GoPro or something, it's not gonna be like a cinematic camera. It's probably not even gonna be as good quality as your phone. Of course it depends. It's not like impossible to make a good quality body cam. But the point is, you can kind of tell that like, the, I mean, the image quality isn't fantastic. Again, could be Twitter, but the point is that's a really important detail, these kind of highlights. I talked about this in the other kind of Unreal, realistic Unreal Engine reaction video I did. I'll have it linked up there. That was like a, around a year ago, I think. Uh, it was also kind of, you know, not not doing the unfair kind of HDR things that games can do where they can just be like, nah, this guy's blue because there's nothing stopping you from being like, let's turn down those pixels, let's up these pixels. It's like you have infinite dynamic range. But here we're seeing, you know, sometimes the lack of quality is almost quality in the department of photorealism, which is really interesting. We're like on frame one and I'm already talking a lot, but but I'll have this linked obviously in the description below if you wanna watch it yourself first before you hear my commentary on it. But you can also just see how much, like wh when it's shaking a little bit, like it goes, look at that, the quality drops. It's almost like, you know, the motion blur that's happening here, even though it's seemingly subtle, is really kind of replicating a fairly low shutter speed of an actual camera filming this. And of course the animations, like the animations have to be really good. Like, look, I've paused this, this looks like garbage, but that's good. That's what makes it look good. You know, I remember back in the day, people used to like make crazy stupid VFX videos that they would, they, they would try and make it seem real. Like, I don't know, some meteor crashing into the earth. That doesn't seem very real, like a car crash or something. And they'd upload it like to Facebook or to Instagram or whatever. And lots of people would be like, this is great. Like a lot of people would believe it. A lot of people would think it was real, but no, it's just CGI. It's just visual effects. And one of the things that they did to make it look so good and to make it so believable is they didn't, they didn't film it on a cinema camera. They filmed it on like, I don't know, a phone of that time. Like this is like 2010 or something. So we're not talking about like the phones of today, but like back then they'd film it on like a little phone or something. It'd be like SD, like 640 by 480 or something or 640 by, I don't know, 360. And they'd obviously match the, the CGI, the visual effects, like compositing to actually be that kind of low res and bad quality. And it just looks so much more realistic. My point being, it's easier to take kind of really, really bad looking footage and put some CGI in that and pass that off as believable compared to if you have like this full HD, like 4K video that's just really clean captured by like a professional camera. And I'm not trying to compare this to that because obviously when the camera does stop, it's not like the lowest quality 360p video you've ever seen, like as in the image quality, but nonetheless, this obviously doesn't look like it's captured by a cinema camera, which I think is also important. Now, the exposure just dimmed so much as well. I think he's very aggressive with the exposure slider here. We've all been there, well actually maybe I'm just old, but we've all been there back in the day when you'd have like a little you know, film camera and it would have like auto focus, auto exposure, and then you put like a subject in front of like a bright window and then the whole photo is just black because there was like so much brightness that the camera's like, oh, I better dial down the exposure and it's ruined your photo. I'm getting those kind of vibes from here, which is, I guess, realistic. All right, let's shut up and watch this a bit. The ground, like these things on the ground are a little bit interesting. I almost feel like they're not lit very well because there's not much light in here. And yet like you can almost, like I can't see many shadows or ambient occlusion here for some reason. Like obviously there's some here, but I don't know. 
that's, if I had to pick something, before you all hate me, by the way, of course this looks good. Of course this basically looks real. I'm just, I'm trying to critique it. Let's keep watching. Yeah, I don't know, the ground just looks a bit weird. But I'm also getting photo scan vibes. Like, that's the thing, from the ground, right? This almost looks like a photo scan. You know a photo scan, like when you try and like, I'm talking about like photogrammetry, like, you know, you, you take all these photos of like something 3D, it could be like, I don't know, a water bottle on your desk, it could be, you know, the, the floor of this like garage or wherever we are. And you take it from like every single possible angle and then you use some like software to kind of make a 3D model out of that. That's extremely high poly. And the textures on it, well, the textures are basically the photos you took, which means that of course it looks real, but then again, the lighting on it might not be quite right. And that's kind of what I'm seeing here. This is really looking kind of like photogrammetry to me. And like, as in it's got that photogrammetry look. Again, I have no idea how this guy made this. No clue whatsoever. I think I've heard of this game from like last year or something, maybe very briefly. But I know nothing technical about how this came about. I just know it's Unreal Engine 5. But that, I suspect, probably doesn't matter too much. Maybe Nanite, though, would be really helping with the high poly count of photogrammetry and, like, photo scanned assets. That's probably true. And then, of course, Lumen would kind of be able to maybe light those really high detailed Nanite meshes. That's probably... What was that animation? <laughs> look at that guy. <laughs> that guy just running. I don't know. That just did not look real to me. Let me put my headphones on. It's getting hectic. Oh, we're gonna see some firing here. Shots fired. Okay, there was a bit of interesting blurring around the edges here, which Shots fired. takes me out of it a Shots little fired. bit. I guess he's trying to replicate some kind of suppression. Like, the thing is though, like looking at all of these textures, like this is what people don't understand. Like for those of you who don't know who I am, by the way, first of all, hi. Second of all, I'm a game engine developer. I used to work for EA on Frostbite and a mobile engine called Osiris. Then I left and now I'm making my own engine called Hazel. Hazel does not have anywhere near the technology of Unreal Engine 5, but I could probably make something that looks 90% as good as this. And in fact, part of me really wants to do that because I think that lots of people just don't understand the fact that it is possible and it has been possible for a long time to make an environment that does look like this. And so when I'm looking at this, it can be difficult to pull it off in the context of an actual video game that people want to play. And this kind of body cam footage vibe is actually a really cool aesthetic and a really cool idea, but it's definitely possible. And so when I'm looking at this, like these textures to me, again, it just looks like someone went to this warehouse, took photos of everything, done. Like slapped it on, done. If this suddenly becomes like, I don't know, a dynamic lighting situation where it's like suddenly dusk and it's golden hour and this is just all completely different, I'll be way more impressed. But at the moment, as cool as it looks, as realistic as it looks, you know, it's kind of like, this is, this might be a generalization, but it's kind of like taking a photo of something, slapping it onto a texture in like Unity and then being like, that's photorealistic. It's like, yes, it's a photo. It is realistic. So, and then, so it's kind of like, well, what's the difference? If you can just photo scan a bunch of stuff, use Nanite to make it a bit, you know, manageable with the high poly and, you know, all the loading and kind of stuff that it does dynamically now, basically. And then you, you obviously use the original textures from your photos. Like Ian Hubert, Ian Hubert, for those of you who don't know, by the way, fantastic artist, uses Blender to make absolutely crazy photorealistic environments. And he's got this great series on his channel right now called Dynamo Dream. He does this a lot, like in his Blender workflow. He'll take like photos, images of things and project them in 3D space onto meshes. And so I basically just projected those pictures back onto some rough 3D geometry. And that was most of the battle right there. I think I took like three different camera angles and, and mapped them out and, you know, combined that with a couple handmade pieces. And the result is incredibly realistic. So that's kind of like the vibe that this is giving me. Anyway, let's take a look at the action because now that stuff's actually happening, now that gameplay is happening, it's actually much more of a tell of like the the talent, I guess. Again, not trying to like, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to disparage this. This is clearly a really good work of art and looks like an amazing game that honestly, I was, I'm almost surprised we haven't seen anything like this before. But now that it's more like interactive and there's a gunfight happening and stuff's happening, the player's engaging more rather than walking around a static environment, we get to see more. So let's take a look. It's the end of a work week, it's Friday, maybe I'm just being salty. But like, again, I am enjoying this. I don't know why I have to keep uh, trying to prove that. The UI could definitely be done better. For those of you who didn't see, that was just, yeah, like a 5 out of 15 here. Be nicer if you could actually, you know, you'd, you'd have to eject the magazine, take a look at it, like, actually, and be like, eh, all, you know, on the side and see how many bullets there are, and is there one in the chamber? But, you know, just because the 
graphics are realistic doesn't mean the gameplay has to be. Yeah, this just looks like a photogrammetry set. Okay, so there's a bit of like, there's um, puddles here which reflect stuff. But again, like, you know, what would this be? You could just do this with like, just regular reflection probes. Like it's, you know, statically capture the environment, have like basically a camera here, capture the environment into like a cube map when you're baking the scene or whatever, and you, you're basically good to go. The faces are blurred, which is really interesting. That, I guess that, that adds a lot probably to the uh, body cam vibe. This would be really cool to experience, though. This is a good little test of uh, dynamic lighting as well, because obviously that spotlight from the flashlight is like making dynamic shadows, as you can see. But everything's kind of so fast, and there's so much motion blur, which you would add. Like, you'd probably add quite a bit of motion blur to simulate, again, the fact that, well, that's a dark environment, you know, this tiny sensor of like a body cam would mean that the shutter speed would have to be quite low, which would mean you would get more motion blur in the actual footage. And thus it would look worse, which is a good thing if you're trying to both create something realistic, but then also kind of make it uh, easier to sell, I guess. Just looking around. Yeah, no, it looks really good. The suppression effects again are a bit, oh, it's kind of cool, the drone. The animations look pretty decent, I guess. The gun, like for the gun reloading and everything. I wonder if there's gonna be blood effects when you shoot someone. Well, there's him shooting someone. Interesting ragdoll. And he kind of didn't show any blood, I think. Oh, hang on. Let's see that reflection. Somehow the reflection, like, looks much higher quality than the actual thing. It's almost like he's, he's got a filter over like, but that would just be over everything, wouldn't it? So it's strange. Maybe it's just a, uh, maybe, maybe that's not, maybe that's not real. It's just, it feels like it is. And like, I don't know, like that van man, scratch up the windshield a bit. <laughs> I know this is a very pre-release kind of video, but still. That looks like the bottom of a CPU right there. I am, really am a programmer, aren't I? Ugh. Going downhill. It does look very, it does look very cool though. The people don't look that great up close, to be honest though. Just the way his clothes are and the sleeve just looks like a Counter-Strike model. And that's it. That's the trailer. I mean, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I'll dip, I'll probably pick up this game. Let's see what other people are saying. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this, but this level of realism in video games should be heavily moderated in shooters for anyone under a certain age or her parents do their job. This level of realism for shooting and killing makes me feel uncomfortable. I agree, actually. Yeah. That's an interesting consideration. How is this different from watching a war movie? Well... I mean, in a war movie, you're not the one doing the killing. You're just watching it. So I think that's a bit different. Here, you're like going around shooting people with the intent to kill them. Unreal Engine 5.1 will be great, but should be moderated heavily. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. With AI as well, being able to generate photorealistic things and like deep fakes, and now game engines being able to render stuff more or less realistic it's far too real like that is a consideration that is actually really interesting like it's almost like the ethics of making games photorealistic like what is that apart from like a technical point of view that people have been striving for, for forever to make interactive experiences like this photorealistic now it's kind of like now that we're basically almost there in my opinion we still have a long ways to go but now that we're basically almost there let's just say we're looking at it from a different point of view minimum requirement <laughs> minimum requirements space shuttle process a dolphin memory <laughs> yeah i'd be interested to see what he played that on um probably a fairly like good development rig but yeah there you go jd mr wilson you got your reaction video hope you guys enjoyed thanks for watching let me know what your take is on this in the comments below did you agree with me did you disagree with me am i dumb <laughs> and have a great weekend guys i'll see you next time goodbye